So moved. And we, to my knowledge, we haven't had any, do we have any correspondence, Maureen? Because I couldn't check the email today. I don't think so. Did we get any correspondence today? There was a letter from Richard Bryant uh, requesting that you uh, verify that there is adequate access for Lot 11 as part of the Cottage Brook development. Okay. Thank you. I haven't been home, so I didn't know. Next order of business is for me to relinquish the chairmanship. Do we have a nomination for a new chairman for the Planning Board Committee? Beth? I'd like to nominate Peter Hatton. Hey. Okay. <laughs> As we the chair for this coming year. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. And for vice chair? I'd like to nominate Beth Richardson. So we have a second. All in favor? So moved. It's been a pleasure serving as chair for the last two years. Thank you. You need your computer because I can't do a book. Oh, good. Go online and do something. Go to the bar. Marie, you want to be done by the picture. I'm going to helicopter you to Texas. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> no way. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, my first act as chair, I would like to. Uh, expressly thank Barbara for her two years of service as chair. Uh, most folks out there don't know that not only has she done this for the last two years, prior to that she was also chair of the Comprehensive Plan for Committee for almost two years as well. So I'd like to recognize uh, her service to the town and thank her very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item we have on the agenda Cottage Brook amended subdivision plan. Spurwink Woods is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Spurwink Woods subdivision. If the uh, applicant could step up to the podium and make the presentation. Okay, my name is Betsy Melrose and I work with Mitchell and Associates. And tonight we're proposing a slight amendment to the Cottage Brook subdivision plan. Uh, I have on my PowerPoint, there's <laughs> 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 a location map and it shows you where Spurwink, uh, Cottage Brook is. It's um, between Spurwink Avenue and um, Mitchell Road. So it's accessed from both uh, Columbus Road and from um, South Street. And it's a 25 acre uh, subdivision. It was part of the residential C open space. It was approved in June of 06. It has 23 um, single family lots and 19 condominium units. And about half of the 25 acres is gonna be uh, conveyed to the town. So here's a... Could you kind of hold it up? Yeah, yeah. thank you. I didn't have it anymore. So this is accessing this from South Street, and this is, you'd come down here from uh, Columbus and access from Kildare. So this is the whole 25-acre uh, site. So these are all the single-family uh, lots, 23, and then there's 19 condo units, and all this open space will be conveyed to the town. So this plan shows a phasing, which was approved in July of 08 of last year a phasing plan. So tonight what I'm here to talk to you about is amending, slightly amending the right of way for Chicory Way. Uh, it was discovered that the existing building on lot 11 here um, is over the setback line from Chicory Way. So when we, we re-examined the, the plan here and determined that with some minor changes we could uh, adjust the right of way and bring the building back into compliance. Uh, in your in your packet, I have some a few exhibits that show how this would happen. Uh, on the the hill slot here, there's a small a small piece of the property. It's 46 square feet, uh, which could be conveyed uh, into 
to the right of way area. And then this line here um, would be offset 50 feet. So it would increase the size of uh, lot 11, maintaining a 50 foot right of way. And then it would bring this, this building lot into uh, compliance so it won't be over the setback anymore. Uh, this change doesn't require any physical changes. Uh, the sidewalk, the esplanade, the, the road, everything is just going to remain exactly the same. It's just the, the actual boundary lines of the right of way. Uh, on lot 11, um, it will require, though, an easement. Uh, in your packet, it shows it as a five foot wide easement, and it was requested um, by Bob Malley that that be increased to a seven foot wide easement just to make sure there's plenty of room for maintenance and the pedestrian activities that would be on that lot. And that's basically it. So it's a very minor change. Do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Any of the board members have any questions? Um, could you address the question about the driveway that was mentioned in the, did you see the letter that we received from Richard Bryant? Yes. And if so, could you address that? Yes, I did. Um, when I was looking through, uh, back through our records from the original approval, um, there's a, letter from Maureen to the board that stated, a memo actually, dated February 27th, and that um, mentions the fact that we are already proposing to have the driveway access from Chicory Way, which is what was mentioned in the letter. So that was already in place to have driveway access from Chicory Way, not from the existing road of Kildare. And, but the determination was that that did not need to be shown on the plan. Was that determined earlier? I think that was another question that was raised in the letter was whether that access should actually be shown. Right, it was never shown on the a plan as part of the original approval. No, none of the driveways for any of the lots are typically shown on subdivision plans. Okay. Thank you. You're any other questions? I think the first thing we need to do is uh, make a finding of completeness to see, to determine whether the uh, applicant has given us sufficient information to move this forward. So moved. Completeness. Have a second. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Um, Next question we have is, do we want to schedule a public hearing and or a site walk? I don't see a need for that. I don't see a need for either. Okay. Then I'll entertain motions. The motion for the board to consider. Go ahead, Beth. Um, with regard to findings and facts, number one, Spurrink Woods LLC is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Spurrink Woods, now called Cottage Brook. Subdivision off Spring Avenue and Kildeer Road and the Mitchell Highlands subdivision located on Columbus, Kildeer, and Thrasher Roads to shift the right of way for Chicory Way, where it intersects Kildeer Road approximately five feet to the south, to cure a setback encroachment for the lot fronting on Kildeer Road and amend lot 46 of the Mitchell Highlands subdivision which requires review under section 16-2-5, amendments to previously approved subdivisions. Uh, two, the application substantially complies with 16-2-5, amendments to previously approved subdivisions. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Spurring Woods LLC to amend the previously approved Spurring Woods, now called Cottage Brook, subdivision located off Spurring Avenue and Kildeer Road, and the Mitchell Highlands subdivision located on Columbus, Kildeer, and Thrasher Roads, to shift the right of way for Chicory Way, where it intersects Kildeer Road approximately five feet to the south, to cure a setback encroachment for the lot fronting on Kildeer Road and amend lot 46 of the Mitchell Highlands subdivision be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the sidewalk easement be approved in form by the town attorney and the town manager and signed by the applicant. And two, that the above condition be met prior to recording the subdivision plat. Second. Discussion on the motion? Yeah, I 
I'd like to discuss it. I, are we moving the right of way 70 instead of 5 for the request the, of It's a, an easement that's 7 feet wide. Gotcha, not the right of way. Okay. Okay. And it, it's not exactly 5 because of the angle, so that's why I put in the approximately. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, Eastman Meadows final subdivision review. Uh, Wiley Enterprises is requesting final subdivision review and resource protection permit for Eastman Meadows, a 46 unit condominium project, plus one single family lot located at 68 Eastman Road, section 16-2-4, major subdivision review for completeness and section 19-8-3 resource protection permit. If the applicant could step up to the podium, identify themselves and make their presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, members of the board. My name is Owens McCullough, civil engineer with Sebago Technics, here tonight on behalf of Wiley Enterprises. Uh, my client, Joel, I sent him on an errand across the street back to his office to print out my color presentation <laughs> so that I can give the board members a reduced copy of it because the full presentation is on this lovely little pen drive. So uh, tonight we'll do it uh, a little differently. So what I can do is, um, I'm going to just let, pass this to the board, and, and when the other ones come in, I'll give everybody a copy of it. And, That's fine. Um, unfortunately, Joel's printer doesn't print out full-size uh, plans. So. Just for the record, we don't have the overhead projector working. I don't know that folks out there know that. Oh, yeah, Thank fair you. enough. Um, we were last before the board on August 19th, uh, really to start an informal review of our final plan submittal. Uh, since that meeting, we have received our main DEP site location permit and our main DEP Natural Resources Protection Act permit. Uh, we also completed the review process with the town's peer review engineer, OST Associates, uh, Steve Harding. Uh, that's been completed, and I believe copies of those permits are in your packet, along with uh, Steve Harding's uh, review letter, uh, indicating that uh, his review is complete on the project. Uh, we're here tonight really to begin the formal final plan review process and we understand it's really a two-step process. The first step tonight um, is to go through the final plan completeness review. Here comes Joel now. Good thing he's right across the street or this would have taken a lot longer. <laughs> As I, was, uh, as I indicated, uh, we're, I would like to start the final plan review process tonight, and I think tonight we just begin with the um, review for completeness for the final plan, and then it's my understanding that we would have a public hearing in February uh, for final action on this. I hope I got that right, Maureen. Yes. <laughs> and, whoops, thank you, Joel. Uh, we did make a final plan submittal here back, uh, actually it was dated December 18th, it's a booklet, and what's in that final plan submittal is a lot of the items uh, to complete the final plan review. Uh, that includes uh, the uh, final <coughs> plans that we had modified per the town engineer's review and planner and planning board comments at earlier meetings. Uh, that included an updated uh, landscaping plan. Uh, primarily focusing on this area over here adjacent Mary Brock. Um, as we indicated the last meeting, uh, we had shifted the road over to provide a little more space between the road and her buffer. 
uh, and her property line. And then we also densified the plantings in that area pretty heavily with a combination of undergrowth and trees, uh, both deciduous and um, evergreen growth to, to provide a natural buffer along there instead of the fence. Uh, we also provided revised condominium declaration and association documents. Uh, those included uh, all the association documents. It included uh, the open space which would be given to the town, which is this area down here, phase three portion. Uh, it included the pedestrian easements, which are here that comes across the site, and also a pedestrian easement that's over the sidewalk. And, into the, and then into the open space. Uh, we understand John Wall has completed a review uh, of those documents. Um, I have a copy of his letter. I understand that he indicated that he didn't see any outstanding issues with the documents. He did note a couple of typos and some clarifications that he asked us to uh, take a look at. One was, uh, I think in the condominium documents, it referred, referenced the sidewalk on the east side of Dipper uh, Dipper Road, which is here, it's actually on the west side, so we thought we should clean that up, which uh, we're having the attempt to do. And then the sidewalk, uh, uh, the other item was uh, sidewalk access is, he asked about the sidewalk access being limited to the specific location um, on, the, on the condominium plan. Um, that is, in fact, limited to just this location here. It was nothing more than a clarification that, that he asked about. And then the last item he mentioned was, he just said that it appeared that bicycles were prohibited. And the only place that bicycles are prohibited is, is along this piece here, within this open space, and on the pedestrian sidewalk through the development. It doesn't prohibit them on the piece that's being given to the town at all. Um, and the intent of that is simply for respect to, these, uh, to the residents within the condominium uh, project. Uh, Maureen also had a couple of items in her review memo uh, that were just some uh, uh, minor miscellaneous items. I think we've addressed some of those. One was um, a comment, uh, I think it came from the fire or the police, about making sure there were stop and street signs on the plans. And actually those are on sheets four and five. If you turn to those plans, they show up on the intersections of all of them. So actually those are. And then uh, there was a comment from the fire chief and a little history here. Uh, when we first started the project, we got a letter from the Portland Water District that indicated there was uh, 900 and I think it was 85 gallons of flow or something like that through the main. Uh, the fire chief wanted 1,000 gallons per minute or he was going to ask for um, sprinklers in the units. What we did was, the, and the documentation we had from the water district was like 10 plus years old. So they actually went out and did a filled hydrant test on the project. This was early on, and that information was provided. And I think it's like 1,085 gallons actually out there. So um, we, we do meet that requirement. Uh, then also as part of the final vote, there was a note about uh, the project uh, that the planning board needed to do a formal recommendation to the council for inclusion of this project in the sanitary sewer service area. As, as all of you may remember, we're extending a force main up Eastman Road. It's about 1,700 feet in length. And so we need to ask the board to do that. And actually, as I was looking through my past documentation uh, on the project, I hadn't realized it until I came across the memo, because there's been a little bit of time since we were last before the board. but. It appears that at the May 20th, 2008 meeting, the planning board did make a recommendation to the town council of a vote of 5-0 to extend it. So that may have already been done. I think, through, like I said, I, I just saw that. I was going through my files tonight and said, oh yeah, we have a memo from Maureen to, uh, to Michael McGovern that the board actually acted on this one already. Is that, do you remember? Okay, so, okay. so I think we're probably okay uh, with that. And then the last item uh, that was in her memo uh, talked about an easement or uh, a request from the Conservation Commission to provide an area for some parking uh, in this area here uh, near the, the farmhouse, which is going to be broken out in a parcel. Uh, Joel is actually going back to the Conservation Commission, is it, I think it's the 10th of February, 
And then we'll be back in front of this board on, I think it's the 27th. 3rd. 23rd of February. Uh, what the Conservation Commission has asked is simply to have us look at uh, providing some parking up in this area. And we are going to work with them and we'll have that worked out when we come back on the 23rd. Uh, with that, uh, tonight, I think Maureen's memo uh, went through it. The town engineer has reviewed it. We're just simply looking to be deemed complete so we can move forward to the next piece. Uh, if you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. I had a great PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it'll be fixed for next That's time. That's some nice graphics. You know? <laughs> okay. Barbara, good questions? I, I have a tiny little question because okay. it drives me crazy. Where, where is the rock ledge outcropping? I've gone over these plans 10 times, um, and I can never it, find it. Yeah, if, if you look on our, we, we went through, we did a, uh, a net residential analysis. Yes. And the ledge that we found on the site uh, was down on the open space. No, I thought so, but I can't find it listed on there. Well, it's, it's only on that net residential piece. Oh, okay. The, with no the wonder football. I can't find it. Yeah. I kept wondering. I, it happened to me the last time, but I think on the last set of plans you had it in there. Yeah, we may have included on the preliminary set. So. Just okay. Just curious. I thought maybe it was my eyesight. Oh, no, no. It was, it was there. <laughs> I have a question about the uh, about the bicycles. You said that the, there's no restriction on bicycles on the open space. Is there other access to that open space if the bicycles can't come through um, this condominium area? Is there some other way to get them to that open space? And, and are these paths suitable for bicycle use? Because well, I'm wondering, particularly the one that's farther away from the residential area, why that would be a disturbance? Uh, well, I, I can answer that uh, it is really a preference on the developer uh, not to have bicycles uh, allowed through here, uh, mostly because you fell to the proximity to the condominium, and Joel could probably expand on that if, if he would like. But as far as other access in, into this development, I believe there are several other points of access, but I'm going to look to Maureen to help me a little bit on that, because I believe there are other points of access into that I call it the Winnick Woods open space and, and that whole area. We, we right now have many um, cyclists, bicycles, um, using Winnick Woods to get into the open space. They're also um, prevalent on the town, on the land trust property, the easement, uh, the Jay Cox property with the easement that the town, uh, excuse me, the land trust has. And I mean, there's actually been a lot of debate within the Conservation Commission um, about how much more public access to bicycles there should be allowed because they tend to really beat up the trails. So the Conservation Commission is comfortable with there not being bicycle access there? Uh, I don't think they haven't discussed it. And I, I, I don't think they'd be unanimous. There are members of the commission who use bicycles and are very careful. Um, there are other members of the commission who are, are very, very concerned about the abuse that bicycles pound into the environment where you have a dry trail for pedestrians, and, and then the bicycles go through during the wet season, and it just turns into a mud hole. So um, there are definitely are, the, the short answer to your question is, there's definitely other ways for bicycles to get in here. OK. Um, so is this plan pedestrian easement currently used? Is there a trail currently in place that people use? Well, it, it's the, this parcel of land doesn't have any formal easements over it currently. Uh, there is. There is, a, in fact, an old farm trail that comes up through here following this general alignment. And what the developer will do when he dedicates this open space is some improvements will be done to that trail to make it more pedestrian friendly for use through it. This one will be a constructed paved sidewalk that comes through the development. And the idea is to provide a second point of connection to this piece of open space back here. It's, it's very, actually very nice back in there. A little tough to walk now, but <laughs> it was very nice. Yes. Just one other quick thing. Were you getting a letter from the water department to add to the, the package? We already did. Oh, you um, already did. Was, okay. Because the letter in the package is the old one. Right. It was That's actually fine. turned in as the, the correct one was turned in as part of the preliminary plan mm -hmm. approval. 
And then when I assembled the final plan approval, I had two letters. I had a 50-50 chance to get it right. I grabbed the old letter okay, by accident. that's fine. But it, it is on record, so. And the applicant has submitted the, new, the old new letter to me a second time. <laughs> I think I'm going to throw away that first one. <laughs> I'll never do that again. <laughs> Any other questions? No. Nope. Comments? Why would you like to make a motion? I would. Motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Wiley Enterprises LLC for major subdivision review, a private road review, and a resource protection permit for Eastman Meadows, a 46-unit condominium with clubhouse and one single-family lot located at 68 Eastman Road be tabled to the regular February 23rd, 2009 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. I also I, have a question, though. Before question. we do, before we vote on that, do we do the finding of completeness? That was my. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. That's all right. I read the wrong. It wasn't one. wasn't a formal. It's not. It's not written. Oh. Why don't we uh, okay. hold that motion while we? Shall I make it? Yeah, okay. why don't you make no, it? No, oh, I can make it. Go ahead. You make it. Okay. No, you make it. All right. I make it. Um, I move that we find. The application by Wiley Enterprises LLC complete. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Now bring, I'll bring Barbara's motion to the table. And it's, since it's been made and seconded, did any discussion concerning the motion? I'll call the roll. All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Five nothing. The motion carries. So we'll see you on the. February 20th. No, I have, I have question one. About, I have we have one a question suggestion. about do we want a site walk <clears throat> between now and the public hearing? <laughs> I, I, I have <laughs> one recommendation for that. I don't feel like I need a site walk. Okay. I mean, we've, we've been through it. But I think that Liza might need somebody just to go out with her to the site. And yeah, I definitely like a site walk. Okay. And I noticed that the Conservation Commission is going out on the 25th. Oh. Do some GPS. The twenty fifth is just two people who are oh. going out to do some GPSing. I, I personally don't feel like we. I need another. Spot. I yeah. I don't feel like I do either. I walked. We've walked it twice, and Barbara got stung to prove it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so did that. Oh Beth. Oh, oh, Beth. Sure. <laughs> she got stung. Um, <laughs> so maybe Maureen and and Liza can just connect, and either you can meet right. Maureen out there, mm -hmm. and or with the applicant. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joel would be glad to go out there with you, and yeah. we'll have a bigger map. If you I know. notice how quickly <laughs> Owen said that Joel would be glad to go out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's delegating very well. <laughs> Sorry, Joel. <laughs> Yeah, and I'd like to see some elevations too. I understand that they were in some. They were in the PowerPoint presentation. Oh, were they? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, do we actually have color graphics of those? I can print them out. Give them to Maureen. I, I have a question for you. Can we? Can the applicant submit the PowerPoint presentation? I, I mean, I could print it out. I've seen it before. Right. But I, I thought maybe yeah. for, I'm guessing Liza has the ability to take a look at it. That would yeah. do two things. One, since she's a new member considering it, she, we've seen it on the screen. Yeah. And that will allow her the opportunity. I to have a it. couple of presentations. One was the very long one we did, you know, about the housing needs and all that. I'm, I'm more interested in the new, the one that you were going to present tonight. Yep. I, given the technical difficulties and given the need to bring one member up to speed on the I, project, I, uh, it does become part of the public can, record. I can print those out in color and get them to you, or I can email it. You could email it. My, my own, if you email it to me, I, I can email it to the whole board. My only concern is I know you tend to generate large lot, not you, but your profession. Uh, you know what? It's a, 10, it's a 10 megabyte file because I looked at it. I looked at it. So it may be, you know, some, some of the servers only allow you to, you know, receive and send up to five megabytes at a I know Roadrunner limits you to, to, to 10, but do you have it on the thumb drive now? Your pen drive now? I can load it onto Maureen's. That's a good idea. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't email it. Maureen, well, just, don't, I'll, I'll, don't, don't I send it to me, please. I've, I've got two <laughs> packages. <laughs> this, is, this is my concern. Yes. It's enough. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think yeah, that's a good idea. either, either yeah. burning it to a CD or, or sharing a thumb drive that has one for everybody at some point is easy enough. Uh, is that okay? 
What would you like, Maureen? I'd be glad to. I'm, why don't you? I, why don't you send me the copy and or give me the copy and, and yes. I'll figure yes. something out. Okay. I can do Great. that. We'll, we'll get it to you. <laughs> Yeah, like, can I, maybe you just won't see it until next month's meeting anyway. Can I clarify the next meeting sure. date? What is the next meeting date? It's Monday, February 23rd. It is. Okay. We I thought I moved, another date. We, we moved it out of the vacation week. I knew that. But routinely I thought I heard what we somebody do. say something other than the 23rd. But Thank you. Just, just for anyone watching, the, the submission deadlines stay the same as if you did not move it. Ah, so okay. the submission deadline for the next meeting is January 30th. Maureen, I do have a question about the, uh, about the submission. I mean, we have a final plan application in. Is there anything else? I, I mean, I haven't changed the plans. We haven't revised anything really since then. So it's it, sort of status quo. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicants or? Thank That's you. February 23rd is the next okay. Correct. The new package had the revised meeting dates in it. We, got, we had a draft. And I think we've also, we've sent for them, we've tried to post them online. Well, yeah, they're on the website. We also moved the April meeting off of the Tuesday. All right. Do we have any other questions of this applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motions to adjourn? I so move. I move. All in favor? Thank you. Um, so tell me about the